Uh, my name is Fred Jensen. I'm the product manager for PowerLog, sometimes referred to as the PowerLog guy. And uh, I'm here to show you some things about PowerLog and, and basically show you why you should love PowerLog as much as I do. So PowerLog is a physical application that's been around for about 35 years. And uh, that's significant. It was actually the first um, computer-based petrophysical interpretation package. And that's significant because it, 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 it's been used for a long time and its algorithms are validated and it has a lot of depth and breadth. There's a, there's a lot to PowerLog and the more you use it, the more you understand how complete a product it is. But it's also a very easy and simple to use product. Now back about 10 years ago, we rewrote PowerLog and moved it into modern architecture. So it's all C -sharp .net and uh, uses all the modern tools and that's, that's important because it, it, it works well in the current environment. It works well with things like Google Earth and it, it works well with clouds and clusters and it has all that kind of functionality built into it. It's also sitting on a database and I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the database except to tell you it's important to understand that we have a database and that we have all these tools to remind you to back up your database. And so that you can back up your data, you can set up automated backups so that you never lose your work. Uh, and you can build m multiple projects and you can handle thousands of thousands of wells in a very effective, efficient manner. So the database brings a lot to the picture. And that's one area where PowerLog is very strong. It really gives us the ability to handle large number of wells. We actually have a client who routinely handles about 5,000 wells a day. So that's one of the big things. We also have a lot of nice features, like we have really easy to use importers. Uh, for example, if you want to load a data, you just go click on it, pick your LAS file, open it, and hit load, and you're done. So we have data loaders for DLIS, LIS, ASCII, and we have smart loaders that they actually will go in and look at the data and try to understand what it is so a lot of tools for loading the data. PowerLog is, the reason PowerLog has been popular and remains extremely popular is that it's easy to learn and easy to use. And we've been focusing for years on allowing the petrophysicist to handle the data loading and the editing and all of the pre-processing stuff as quickly as possible and get to the fun stuff, the actual interpretation. So we've loaded all the data. We've got it here listed down here. This is our our project data manager, which shows us our project tops and a lot of project information. And then we have the individual well data down here that shows the tops and the curves and the zones and everything that's been created for each particular well. So let's go ahead and start it out by looking at a log. We're going to look at a log. These are North Sea logs. So let's go ahead and view what we call a log plot. And here's a log plot. And we have over here the gamma ray, the SP, the caliper, resistivity curves, the density of neutron, and the sonic. So here's all the data. We're showing the tops over here. All of those were loaded. These were loaded from ASCII files. And the rest of these came in as a DLIS file. You know, we have multiple wells in the project. And if you if you want to try to get an understanding of, of what kind of data you have available, we have these multi-well QC grids where you can bring in all of your data and take a quick look and understand exactly what curves you have and what wells. And as you can see, our, our data is kind of scattered, but we have some wells that have a pretty good selection of data. And we're going to be looking at this 2-1-5 in this case, although we could we could look at other wells, but this is the one we've chosen to look at. So we've got our, our curve displays here, and we've got our tops loaded, and we want to start doing some, some interpretation. Um, one of the things that you first need to do is you need to say, do I have all of the data that I need? I've got a temperature curve. That's good. But I'm going to need, before I can start interpreting, I'm going to need to build a volume of clay curve and do some other stuff. So let's take a look at the data in a little more detail. Let's go look at a cross plot. We have all kinds of cross plots. We'll look at a neutron density. So here's the data. We have our neutron here and our density here. 
gamma ray, it looks like we have um, a lot of shale, a little bit of tight sand, a little bit of what looks to be porous gas sand sitting up in here. We might be interested in where those are, so if we are, we can go in here and we can build a polygon real quickly and try to see where that data is. And so it looks like the Fulmar is a zone that we're going to be interested in doing some interpretation on. We also have some tight sands down in here, just so I can get an idea of what kind of data we have. And our tight sands are also right below the full mark in this section right in here. So just by going in and quickly looking at this, we also have this just, just horrid stuff over here that really interesting looking stuff. Just be curious to where all that is. And that's in this section right here, which is the uh, Valhalla, the Humber. I think that's a chalk. So um, that, that kind of explains that kind of log response. So real quickly, we've been able to go in and do, build a cross plot, take a quick look, identify some areas of interest, and get an understanding of, of what the reservoir we're looking at. So let's go ahead and compute. The first thing you need is a V-clay. I say, I say this to everybody I start talking to about logs, is if you do not get a good V-clay curve, you are not going to get a uh, good interpretation. It's critical. So let's do our V-clay curve. We have a lot of ways of doing V-clay. We're not going to get very complicated today. We're just going to go in here, and I'll just pretend we haven't started yet. And we're going to create a V-clay curve. So let's pick our clean points. Um, we want to do uh, pick values. So let's go with a clean point, oh, about 9. We don't like to have too much clean sand. And then let's go with a clay point about, let's be a little pessimistic and go here at about, we want to make sure we, we put a little clay in there, so about nine, 91. So there's our, our clean and shale points. So then we just go in here and we run this module. And we quickly generate a V-clay curve, which we can look at right now. So there's our V-clay curve. Um, let's go ahead and focus in on an area that we already know we're interested in, which is this section down in here. And highlight in on it. And so now we have our clay. And it looks pretty interesting. Let's instead of PECCOM, let's go the linear and run it. And you can see we get slightly different responses. A lot of different algorithms available about everywhere. So this is for more uh, older rocks where we have the, the uh, Lernov, we have Clavier, we have different kinds of Stibers. Now what's interesting is the PECCOM actually, when you run it, it will give you a little bit, you see what it's doing here? It's taking the thin beds and making them a little bit cleaner. And you might ask yourself, what exactly is it doing? Well, you can come in here. I hit the wrong button. You can come in here, and you can bring up the help files. And you can see that the PECCOM is actually doing a little bit of a deconvolution and uh, correcting for thin zones and showing it a little bit cleaner in the thin zones. We have really good help files in PowerLog. And uh, I just wanted to show that because that's a nice feature. So now I've got a V-clay curve. It looks OK to us. The next thing we would want to do is get an idea of the water of the RW in our zone. So let's bring up our log plot again. And let's go look at our RW. To get our W, let's go ahead and look at a picket plot. So we're going to go once again into cross plots. We spent a lot of time there as your petrophysicist. And we're going to go in here, and we're going to get an idea of what our RW is. Oops. And our RW is about 0.05 at bottom hole temperature. We've already corrected. We've already got a temperature curve, and we can go back in and see that that, that corrects to somewhere around 0.1 up at the surface. So now I have an idea what the RW is, and we're actually 
ready to go in and make an interpretation. Now the original cross plot, if you recall, and we can go look at it again real quickly, demonstrated that this is not the most simplistic lithology you've ever seen. It looks like we've got some sands here, but we've got some other lithologies involved. So rather than doing just a real simplistic, let's go ahead and, and do a little bit more complex analysis. And let's go ahead and go in and do a multi-mineral analysis. So let's do multi-min, bring it up. And the multi-min allows you to take your neutron, your density, and your sonic. If you have other curves, you can select the curves you want. There's a lot of, of, of flexibility within the package. But we're going to use neutron density sonic since that's what we have. Um, we put in some of the, the parameters. Um, here we have VCL times 1.5. I'm not sure we need that. But we can go back and, and look at that later when we get our results in. Here's the, uh, the, the parameters that we have for, for our lime, our dolomite, our sand. We've got a V-clay curve we already created. And we also think these are our clay parameters based on our cross plots. And then here is 0.1. So that corrects to about 0.05 at bottom of temperature. We get an idea of what we're doing here. It's just some simple. We have a whole bunch of different options in here. We need to see Mando. So it's really easy to set up, but we're going to generate a whole bunch of output curves. So let's go ahead and run this. And it's going to run. And let's take a look at the results. Now, PowerLog allows you to save whatever screens you've built, but it also allows you to save your tracks. So I built a multi-min, and I can come in here and drop it, and there's my multi-min track right there. Now, what multi-min doesn't give you is a bulk volume hydrocarbon, but we have MathPack. And if I bring up MathPack, I can compute a bulk volume hydrocarbons by subtracting my effective porosity from my bulk volume water, run that, and there's my hydrocarbon volume. And we have actually, at this point, completed a pretty nice interpretation of this reservoir. Um, we can go in and you can mul run multiple scenarios if you'd like. You could say, okay, well, that was pretty cool. Uh, let's go in and let's try a different water saturation. Let's be real pessimistic and go Archie. And not much changes. So it, this is a, one of those zones that the, the sands are pretty clean. We're not going to see a lot of effect from that. The lithology turned out to be a really nice. We know that the fulmar is a clean sand. We have it as a clean sand. We have some limes down here. So now we have a pretty good idea of what the, the interpretation is. The next thing you might want to do is go in and you might want to see how much pay you have. That's an idea. So let's go in here in the cutoffs and zones. And I'm going to show you some of the neat functionality in PowerLog. We want to use my multi-min water saturation here, the multi-min porosity, and the multi-min V clay. And the same thing down here. We're going to use the multi-min water saturation, the multi-min porosity the Multiman V clay. Um, our outputs are going to be the zone, net pay, hydrocarbon pore volume, some pretty standard net pay things. And we're going to go from the, we haven't created a full mar top, so we can go from the top of the full mar to the base of the full mar here and we're going to generate this report we're not going to generate output curves although you could generate pay flags and that sort of thing we're going to say water saturation determines pay and then these determine reservoir and we're going to generate a report and we're going to overwrite the existing report so let's run this Let's view our report, 
And there's your final analysis for the report. It's about six and a half feet thick. You have 1.5 feet of your hydrocarbon pore volume with an average porosity of 27% and an average net pay of 13%. Now you might want to get some other factors that you're interested in. So we have a lot of other ways of viewing the data. And one of the things I want to look at real quickly is a game board. So we can look at what we call a cross plot game board. Um, hold on, I'm having a little bit, here we go. And bring up a cross plot game board. It popped up on the other screen. And here we get an idea of what our bulk volume irreducible is and it looks to be running at about two percent you can see that indeed our rw point you know, 0.05 is pretty good and you can see from this parameter that we can go in and we can take a look at our final results and get an idea of the quality of our interpretation you can adjust all of these parameters You see that the, this, the pay section's out in here, but we do have a lot of a very dense rocks in this total interval. So I hope this gives you an idea of the power that you have available to you when you're running the software you know, using PowerLog. It has a lot of tools that are easy to use and easy to understand. It's a very interactive product. We could go in and zoom in on the full mar. And we might want to create a full mar zone. And so we could go in here and zone. And we could say, I want my full mar to go from here to here. And I want to name it full mar. And I'm just to find the zones. I commit that to the database. And now I can uh, use this zone and do all my analysis. And that pretty much concludes a real, real quick demonstration of PowerLog. We just wanted to give you a few minutes to give you an idea of some of the some of the tools that are available on PowerLog and some of the functionalities. You can then export these interpretations and send it to a mapping package. And you can use this data in the future in any way you like. You can apply these screens to other wells. So there's a lot more functionality. So if you have any more interest in PowerLog, please contact the PowerLog representative in your area. And they will be glad to set up a demonstration or an eval of the software for you. Thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to the next presentation. And we may cover some other topics, such as rock physics or something else exciting like that. Thank you very much.